I'm going to use this software defined radio to help you visualize pulse shaping in digital modulation. And I've got a transmit antenna here and a receive antenna here, and we are transmitting 8 QAM. We can see in the software here it shows an 8 for the QAM, and we're transmitting at 2.4 gigahertz right in the Wi Fi band. And what we can see here is we are not using any transmit filter. And the constellation diagram is very clean. All of the points at the transmitter are exactly located where you would expect those eight points to be. And if you'd like more information on a constellation diagram, I encourage you to look in the show notes for this video. Uh, we've got other videos on the channel that explain all these concepts. So let's look at what's happening at the receiver. And of course, at the receiver, there is noise. So the points are not exactly tightly located, but still in this case, they're pretty tightly uh, clumped where they are supposed to be. So we're not going to be making any digital errors here. If I put my hand in the way, we can see that the uh, receive constellation becomes a bit more blurry, but still in this case, for this signal to noise ratio, you're not going to be making any errors. Even if I move the antenna down here to adjust the gain or, or affect the, uh, the coupling, it still has a good uh, signal to noise ratio. Even if I hold the antenna, uh, you can see that the spreading out of the points is not too bad. All right, now let's think about this with not having any filter. What that means is we are sending with a lot of bandwidth because we are turning on the waveform exactly at the uh, boundary of the uh, symbol time and we're turning it off exactly in a square wave like this, which means in the frequency domain, we're going to be seeing a sync function, the Fourier transform of the square, and that sync function is across all frequencies. So we're using a lot of frequency uh, to achieve this very high coupling and, and uh, high uh, clustering of our points at the receiver. So let's try using a different pulse shape filter. And what we're going to do is have a look at a root raised cosine filter. And again, if you're interested in more information about these filters, check out the show notes. We've got a video on pulse shaping technical theoretical details. So here we're going to start with an alpha of zero. And what that means is we've got a, an exact sync function in the time domain. So instead of having the square function before where we turn our data on and off exactly uh, abruptly with a square, we're now using a sync function, which is spreading out into the neighboring symbol times, but it's doing it in a way so that it doesn't affect those symbol times. And now if we play it, we'll see what the effect is on our constellation diagram at the transmitter. And we can see here that we've now got a different constellation diagram. The points are still located at the locations where you would expect eight QAM points to be, but now the waveform is traveling a lot of, uh, around a lot of phases and amplitudes between those sampling times. So let's have a look at what's going on at the receiver now. This was the receive constellation before, and now we're going to change the filter to a root raised cosine, and we'll see the effect on the receive constellation diagram. Here's the receive constellation diagram now with a root raised cosine filter with an alpha equals zero. And that's fantastic from a compression in the bandwidth point of view, as we can see here with a sync function in the time domain, you have an exact uh, square function in the frequency domain and it's occupying the minimum bandwidth possible, one on T. Uh, in this case, uh, one on T is 125 kilohertz. Uh, so this is great from a bandwidth compression, but you can see the effect on the constellation diagram. Because you've squeezed it into that narrow bandwidth, you have to pay a penalty. And we can see now these eight constellation points are much more spread out. So one of the problems with a sync function is that the waveform shape goes at an acute angle down through the sample points at the neighboring time slots for the next samples. So what that means is if you get your sampling slightly wrong, you're gonna have a big problem. And we can see that here. The electronics in this software defined radio are having a really a difficult time exactly sampling at the right time. And if we look in the eye diagram here, 
then the eye diagram is uh, only slightly open at certain times, but mostly closed. So we'd be making lots of errors with this pulse shape filter. So if we try to go for the extreme of compressing exactly within one on T bandwidth, we're going to have a lot of errors happening. So let's try a different value of alpha, which is not quite so aggressive as alpha equals zero. Let's try perhaps the other extreme of alpha equals one. Now we've got a different shape in the transmitters, kind of an interesting shape. The eight points are more uh, uh, dispersed than they were for alpha equals zero. Uh, but of course, this is only at the transmitter. The actual uh, determining factor is once it's gone through the transmit filter and the receive filter. So let's turn the receiver on and give it an alpha equals one. And then let's see what the effect is here as it loads and we'll see the reception now. So here's the receive constellation diagram when you're using a root raised cosine filter and alpha equals one. In this case, they're nicely separated. So when we had alpha equals zero, they were not nicely separated. We were trying too much to cram into the, the narrow bandwidth. When we relax that and we use alpha equals one, then we get a nicer constellation. So there's a natural trade-off that we are uh, seeing here between fitting a signal into a bandwidth, the narrow bandwidth, or allowing ourselves to use a wider bandwidth and overcoming the errors that we got when we were too aggressive with alpha equals zero. So perhaps maybe alpha equals 0.5 might be a better choice, uh, a bit of a compromise between using uh, more bandwidth and getting a bit errors. And here's the constellation at the transmitter for 0.5. Interestingly, at the transmitter, these root raised cosine filters are causing the uh, dispersion of the actual points, which is, uh, which is interesting. Of course, as I said, it really matters once it's gone through the receive filter as well as the transmit filter. So we've set the receive filter to be 0.05 as well to match it. And let's run that and we'll see what the constellation looks like. And here we have the receive constellation for 8QAM when we use a 0.5. So as I said, this is a, a trade-off between zero and one. Zero, where you're using the minimum amount of bandwidth, but you're having lots of errors, and one where you didn't have any errors, but you're using twice the minimum bandwidth. In this case, we've got a roll-off factor of uh, 0.5, and it's a good compromise. So this is uh, what we can see for uh, 8QAM. Let's just see what it is going to be like for uh, 16QAM. And here's the constellation, the transmit constellation with 16QAM. More challenging because we're now sending four bits per symbol. And so let's look at the receiver with 16QAM. And we can see that for 16QAM, we've still got a good uh, trade-off. We're, we're not using too much bandwidth, but we are getting uh, good error detection. Although when I put my hand in the way and block the signal, things start to have errors for 16QAM. And if we look at the eye diagram for 16QAM, it looks open for much of the time, but occasionally it closes over like we just saw there. So hopefully this video has given you more insights into the effect of the pulse shaping filter. As I said before, check out the show notes. There's a video going into much more detail about pulse shaping filters. If you've liked the video, give it a like, helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And you'll find a web page in the show notes which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.